Today we're going to be discussing constant acceleration. Acceleration occurs whenever there is a change in an object's velocity. And if you remember, velocity is basically speed plus a direction. So whenever either one of those change, the speed or the direction, there is going to be an acceleration. So think about the three things that could possibly happen for acceleration to occur. First off, an object could speed up. It could go faster. Secondly, it could slow down. It could go slower. Okay, so those two are the two changes that the speed could have. And the third one is for an object to change direction. So turn left to right, up or down, whatever you're talking about. Okay, so those three things allow or are the changes that velocity could have, and therefore the three different ways an object can accelerate. When we talk about acceleration and calculating acceleration, we're really going to be looking up at, at first at these two things, at an object speeding up and an object slowing down. So let's look at the equation that we would have for those two things to happen. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, much like velocity was the rate of change of position. So if you remember our velocity equation was that V was delta X over T. So if that was our rate of change of position, and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, our general form for that equation is going to be that A equals delta V over t, the change in velocity over the time it takes for that velocity to change. And if you think back to what that delta stands for, it means final minus initial. So if we expand this out, we get that a equals vf minus v naught over t. Let's real quick think about the units here we're dealing with. Okay, remember that velocity units were some distance over time. So in our most basic metric units, we're looking at meters per second. Okay, we measure time in seconds. So we're going to get a unit for acceleration that's meters per second per second. And to make that a little bit easier to write, it's going to be meters per second squared if we're talking about our base units. Okay, sometimes you'll see kilometers per hour per second. And that's if an object is, try if we're measuring the velocity in kilometers per hour, its rate of change per second. Okay, so when we have an acceleration, we're saying that how many meters per second it changes, its speed changes every second. Okay, so we're going to use that relationship to come up with our first constant acceleration equation. And our constant acceleration equations are going to relate five different variables together. So the five variables that we're going to be looking at when we do these problems are initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement. This relationship is going to be looking at initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. This one does not include displacement. So the relationship we had before, we said that acceleration equals Vf minus V naught over T. And we want to solve for the acceleration. I'm sorry, solve for the final velocity, excuse me. So we're going to multiply both sides by the time first. That gets rid of the time on our right side. And so now we're left with AT on our left, which equals VF minus V naught. If we bring the V naught to the other side, we get that the final velocity of an object is equal to whatever its initial velocity is, plus its rate of acceleration times the time that it accelerates. Okay, so there's your first of what I like to call the big four constant acceleration equations. VF equals V naught plus a t. And that one took into account initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Our next equation is going to be looking at the idea of average velocity. Remember that equation we used a long time ago when we first started talking about equations, that v equals delta x over t. And we said this held true for two kinds of velocities, average and constant. Okay, so we're going to think about this idea of an average velocity right here. How do you find the average of two numbers? Of course, you just add them up and divide by two. 
So if we're looking at the average velocity, and let's say we have an object that's accelerating at a constant rate, we can say the average velocity at that time is just the average of whatever its initial velocity and final velocity are. So we say that one half times V naught plus VF, so we're just finding the average of V naught and VF, we're just adding those two up and dividing by two, is equal to the change in object's position, its displacement, over the time. So if we want to solve this thing for displacement, all we do is multiply both sides times T. Pretty easy. And we get our third of our constant, or our second of our constant acceleration equations. Object's displacement is equal to the average velocity, which we're going to find by adding up the initial and the final velocities dividing by two times the time. Okay, so there is your second of the big four. And notice that this one relates displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, and time. Okay, so those are the four variables that are included on this one. The third of our constant acceleration equations is going to be if the first two were combined together. Okay, so let's think about what our first two equations were. The first one we said VF equals V naught plus AT. And the second one we just looked at said delta X is one half V naught plus VF times T. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this relationship over here, which we know equals VF, and we're going to plug it in for VF. So we're going to continue over here on the right hand side, and we're going to say that delta X equals one half times V naught plus V naught plus AT times T. Okay, so now we have to distribute through both the one half and the t. Okay, we have to distribute that to all the terms inside of our parentheses. So we're going to combine like terms. We're going to add our two v naughts together. So we're going to say delta x is equal to one half times two v naught plus a t times t. So I'm now going to multiply everything by one half and everything by t. So I'm going to get that my initial velocity, this V naught, okay, one half times two is just, that gets rid of that. So it's gonna be V naught times the T plus one half times AT times T, which is one half AT squared. And that's our third equation. Object's displacement equals its initial velocity times the time that it's traveling plus one half times the object acceleration, times the time squared. So this one relates change in position, initial velocity, time, and acceleration. It does not have final velocity in it. Okay, So there it is, your third of the constant acceleration equations. The fourth constant acceleration equation is one that we can derive many different ways. But I'm not going to drive it today. We'll see it later on in the semester when we talk about something called the work energy theorem, which relates work and an object's change in kinetic energy. So I'm just going to write out the equation today. And this says that the final velocity of an object squared is equal to the initial velocity of the object squared plus two times the acceleration of the object times its displacement. Okay, so there is the fourth of the constant acceleration equations. And notice that it relates final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement. Time is not used in this relationship. Okay, So we've looked at four different equations. And in each one of those equations, one of our four quantities has been left out. Notice I've also done a, I've tried to do a good job of listing out my variables. Okay, and This is something we're going to look at on the next slide. And that's our problem solving technique we're going to use during the semester. And it's called the guess method. Okay? When we do problem solving, we're going to use something called the guess method. And the guess method, you know, as you can imagine, well, let's use the pen and not the highlighter there. So we're going to have G U E S 
S. Okay, so it's five different steps. They all kind of come together, and it's nothing more than just listing out your variables. Okay, so the first kind of variables we're going to look at are the givens. So we're going to list our givens. The other variable, the one that we're trying to solve for, is our unknown. Okay, and in some problems you can have more than one unknown. We'll see that. You'll list out the equations that you need. Okay, some problems, like I said before, with having multiple unknowns, if you only have one unknown, you'll have to use one equation. If you have multiple unknowns, you're going to have to use more than one equation. So that's something to keep in mind when you're solving problems, is make sure that you're keeping your thoughts organized on paper and you're showing your work throughout. Okay, the third step we're going to use, do is we're going to substitute. And when I say substitute, what I mean is you're going to plug in your givens and your unknowns into your equation. Okay, that is the substitution step. The final step is to solve. Okay, when you solve, you need to show me your final answer with a unit. Okay, it's very important to have your units throughout. Okay, show them throughout the problem. And sometimes, especially if it's a very difficult problem, it can help you to solve the issue by multiplying your variables together. So maybe you have an acceleration times a time, which will give you your velocity units, and that can help you solve maybe a difficult problem. Okay, so you want to use the guess method. You want to list out your givens. Okay, and in these kind of problems we're looking at right now, these two steps right here, we're looking at displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, time, and acceleration. So you want to list those out, and the one, and that's going to help you then guide the equation that you're going to choose. Okay, I cannot emphasize enough to you how important it is to let your variables determine the equation to use. Okay, that's a way to be a very good problem solver. If you try to go the other way and choose an equation and then try to force your variables into that equation, you have the likelihood of missing the question or just having a very difficult time solving the problem. So list out your givens, write out your unknown, put a question mark next to your unknown, write out your equations, substitute into the equation, and then solve the problem. Okay, so let's do one practice problem here. Let's see if we can use the guess method and solve it. All right, so it says a car is moving with a velocity of 18 meters per second when it begins to accelerate at 4 meters per second squared for 10 meters. Determine its speed after it has traveled 10 meters. All right, so let's list out those givens that we have, all those quantities. Let's see if we can figure out which ones are our givens, which ones are our unknown, which one we don't have, and then solve for the unknown. Okay, so displacement is one of them, initial velocity is one of them, final velocity, acceleration, and time. So let's see if we can figure out which ones we have, which ones we don't have, and which ones we need to solve for. Alright, so the first we'll look at is displacement. Think about the units for displacement. Okay, you're right, there should be some kind of distance unit and a distance unit only. There should be no time involved in, so, in determining your displacement. Okay, so let's look at our problem and see where our displacement is located. I'm going to highlight this one in red. Okay, so our displacement is going to be the 10 meters. Okay, when you see meters, that's when you know that it's an object's displacement. So I'm going to list right here next to my delta x the fact that our car is going to be traveling for 10 meters. All right, now we have initial velocity and final velocity. So I'm going to highlight this in yellow. It says a car is moving with a velocity of 18 meters per second when it begins to accelerate. Okay, so the 18 meters per second is going to be our initial velocity because that's the speed that it has before it begins to accelerate. Okay, so initial velocity, I'm going to put 18 meters per second. Okay, final velocity, we're not given another unit or another number in our problem that has a meter per second as the unit. So I'm going to skip that for now and we'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, the next thing it says or that we're looking for is the acceleration. All right, and it tells us pretty clear in this problem because it says that it's going to accelerate at 4 meters per second squared. Sometimes problems may not spell it out to you so easily, but in this case, it both spells it out and it shows to you that the unit is meters per second squared. Okay, so anytime you have that distance unit over two time units, then you're going to get acceleration. So right now we're going to fill in our acceleration, which in this case is 4 meters per second squared. Okay, now we have to look at final velocity and time. We have our three givens, and in most one-step problems, you'll have three givens. 
You may have to think about them sometimes, such as free fall acceleration. It may not be explicitly given to you, but you know that's an object of acceleration. So now we need to figure out which one of these is our unknown. Okay, and in this problem, it's asking us to determine the object's speed. Okay, and you think, well, I don't have speeds on my list of variables. I don't have an S out here anywhere. Okay, and that's true, you don't. But in this case, because our object is traveling in just one direction, we can think of speed and velocity as being the same idea. So the question is actually asking us to solve for final velocity. So that's our unknown. Okay? We're not using time in this case. And if you don't list the time out, that's okay too. You can list it out, you can cross it out, whatever you want to do. All right? Whatever helps you keep your thoughts organized on paper. So now we have our four variables that we're going to be trying to find a relationship between. So we're going to go back and look at our big four constant acceleration equations. And we're going to determine which one relates these four together. So flip back or look up the page in your notes and see which one of the which equation that we've listed out relates these four variables together. All right, it's the fourth one. Okay, the one that says that vf squared equals v naught squared plus two a delta x. So there we've done the first two steps of the guess method. We listed out our givens which is delta x, v naught, and a. We've listed out our unknown, which is vf. We've put in our equation. Our next step is to substitute. So we're going to substitute into this equation our unknowns. I'm sorry, our givens. We're going to keep the unknown as the vf. Okay. Where we have v naught, we're going to plug in our initial velocity, which was 18 meters per second. Okay. 2 is just a constant. Acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. And delta x is 10. Okay, so we're going to plug this into our calculator. First thing we're going to do is we're going to square 18. 18 squared is 324. So we're going to say vf squared equals 324. And our units in this case, we have over here, Okay, we have meters per second inside a square. So when we square the number, we also have to square the unit. So our unit is going to be meters squared per second squared plus, and then we're going to go 2 times 4 times 10, which is 80. And then our units, because we're adding them together, we want to make sure that they're the same. So our units here, we have meters per second squared times meters. So that again gives us meters squared per second squared. So we add up 324 plus 80, which gives us a value of 404. So VF squared equals 404 meters squared per second squared. Then we want to take the square root of both sides to get the VF by itself. And we've determined that the final velocity of the car after it accelerates for the 10 meters is 20.1 meters per second. Okay, so there's this one basic one step problem for you to use the guess method on. I know that it seems like it may be a lot of work, and there are some times where you're going to have problems that are so simple that yes, you feel like you don't need to use the guess method. However, there are other times where problems are going to be multi step, two or three steps, and you're solving for lots of different things, and it's going to be definitely necessary for you to use the guess method to keep your thoughts organized on paper. Show as much work as is required for somebody else looking at the problem to follow it. Okay, I know that you could probably figure it out on your own without listing out all your work, but when I'm sitting down to grade your test or quiz, make sure that I'm able to follow your work.